How's it going guys? It's Root Junkie here and in today's video we have my Amazon Fire 5th Gen tablet. So really excited. We're going to show you guys how to root this device right here with a cool little batch script. So first of all, let's get all of our prerequisites out of the way and just um, go through some things to get it set up. First thing you got to do, here's your device. Go to settings and you want to go where it says device options. Click on that. Then here's your serial number and you're going to tap on it a whole bunch of times in sale it says no need you're already a developer and you see developer options pops up. So once you go in here just come over here where it says ADB or enable ADB and make sure it is checked. Mine is checked and turned on. So once you've done that go ahead and plug the device into your computer. So let me see if I can get this thing plugged in. There we go. And you'll see it tells you up here USB debugging connected and some information about how you're connected. Mine is, is media device, connected as a media device. So once this connects, there's going to be some drivers that if they don't automatically install, you're going to need to install, which can be a little tricky. I'll try to go over a little bit on my computer. Um, but we're going to download some files from XDA because those guys over at XDA are who hooked us up here with this root method. And uh, we'll show you the thread. So let's go to my computer. All right, guys, here we go. This is XDA. So this is what we're going to be working with right here. This is the thread. These are the guys you got to thank. Seriously, give them a big thanks. Awesome work. I can't even say their names, so I'm not even going to try. But you can see a uh, username, a username, a username, and, of course, Chainfire from SuperSu. That's, he's the developer behind that. Awesome dude. Met him at the Big Android Barbecue. Really cool guy. Uh, a lot of fun. So anyway, these are the guys who kind of worked this together and figured it out. All you got to do, you can ignore this stuff. You can look into it if you want, but it's not really important. What you need is this right here, this link. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that link. It's going to take me here, and then you just click the download file, and it will go ahead and download here at the bottom. So it says root fire zip. All right, so that's all you're really going to need from the site. Go ahead and read through this if you want. Um, basically, it's using a modified boot image to enable these features to run, which is really awesome. So... We've got all that figured out. Let's go ahead and show you. I've downloaded the file um, and went ahead and extracted. It leaves you with this root uh, dash fire. And the cool thing about this is they made this work with either Windows or Linux. So this is the Windows batch file. And actually, you can see it over here on the side. And this is the root sh, which is for Linux. It's the same thing as a batch file. Basically, it's a script file. And you can run that one if you're on Linux. So it works on either system. Now, when it comes to drivers, there's a couple things you can do. You can either install the universal ADB naked drivers, which are right here, um, or you can, there's a, dri a driver file, which is right here. So if your drivers aren't working, let me just show you how to do this. So if you go to computer, right click and say manage, you can actually open up your device manager. And, and this should open up. It takes a little bit to open device manager. And you come in here, and if your drivers aren't functioning correctly, You'll see something in here labeled like Fire 5th Gen or something, Amazon Fire, and you can manually install your drivers. Now, once you have them installed, they should look something like this, ADB composite interface. Um, that's what it should look like. So just, just so you have an idea. But you can manually install them by going through the command prompts here if they don't automatically install. All right. So that is how you're going to do it. When you manually install them, just direct the thing to look in this folder. And I think you click on I think that file, and it'll it'll should install through uh, Device Manager. All right, so we should be good to go. Um, the other thing I'd mention is there's going to be a pop up on the device once the ADB drivers install. That's going to say allow ADB debugging on this device through the computer, and you want to make sure you check that. If that doesn't pop up on your device, mine already did, so I've already done it. But if it doesn't pop up on your device, then um, just toggle ADB on and off in Developer Options. So just come in here and turn it on and off until it pops up on your device. There you go. That's the best information I can give you. All right, let's go ahead and run the file. So we're going to click on it. And basically what this is going to do is just give us a rundown of what it's going to do. It talks about basically everything I've already covered about getting uh, debugging enabled and so on and so forth. Um, able it, plug, unplug the device, plug it back in, different things to try to get your prompt to show up so you can approve it. But I've done all that, so let's go ahead and press any key to continue. 
And it just tells you again, shows you your device is attached right here. It says devices, that means your drivers are functional. If it doesn't say that, then you gotta go back and keep playing with it, which is what it basically tells you. And then press any key to continue. So once your device is uh, in fast boot screen, continue. So we should see this right here. So this says fast boot right in the bottom. So press any key to continue. So I'll hit my space bar. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna boot a modified boot image, which is basically gonna give us read write on our system. And which is basically root access is the way you pretty much would put it. So if you have read write on system it means you can read or write to it. So we're gonna be able to write files with the script. So what it should say here is when your device is on the lock screen, press any key to continue. The reason they're doing that is because they want to prove that device is fully booted before you do anything to continue with the script. And it proves that you have read-write at that point. So here's our lock screen. It's mine without any ads. Cool trick I did to do that. Uh, press any key to continue. And it's pushing over all the files to get root. All right. Um, it's starting a root script here at this point. So device should now reboot when you see fast boot screen. Again, we see it. Press any key to continue. And this should be the last time to boot up and run the script. And once the script runs, we'll have root access on the device, which is just awesome. Mine's upside down. I know it's funny, but that's just how things line up for me. Like I said, if you want to get rid of uh, ads on your lock screen, if you want to install Google Play Store, you guys got to check out my video on that. It is awesome. If I do say so myself, we'll get those things installed for you. I have a script just like this that does it automatically. Installing the latest software update, which is interesting. That's a little interesting. It did that to me earlier, too. So, there we go. We're done. So, it says, when you are on lock screen, once again, press any key to continue. So, we'll do that. And sending off final commands. Um, root complete. Enjoy. So, it looks like it's rebooting one last time. Yep, press any key to continue. At this point, it says to do that. So, I'm just going to go ahead and press any key to continue. And the script is closing. So at this point, you're pretty much done on the computer. Let's check out the device. All right, we've totally booted up here. So let me go ahead and unplug this. Flip this thing around. Unlock my lock screen without any ads. Love that. Swipe, swipe. Oh, super sue. Click on it. Boom, say no thanks, and you definitely have root access. Now, another thing you can do is you want to test it. I've actually got terminal already installed, which is you can do root with it, so I'm going to just check it on here. So we should be able to have a terminal window prompt pop up here in just a second, and then we can type in su and hit enter, and then that should prompt SuperSU to give us the prompt. There it is, grant. And that proves root access right there in this terminal window. I'm just going to close it out. And voila, we have root access. Now at this point, do you want to get rid of this launcher? Yes. Yes, we do. I have Apex Launcher and Google Now Launcher installed. But if you launch them, it tells you it's not default. So you go to settings to set it as default. It doesn't even let you do it. So and it always defaults back to this. You can't set it as default. Well, we have root access now, so we're gonna show you how to do that, and then we'll wrap this video up. But root access is fully achieved at this point. All right, let's finish this process up and get rid of this dumb launcher so we'll be basically 100% Android. That's what I'm looking forward to here. So to get rid of the stock launcher here for Amazon, it's very, very critical, I repeat, super critical, you have another Android launcher installed. I have Apex Launcher and I have Google Now Launcher, both installed. I got them from the Play Store. Like I said, watch that video. It's really cool. Get the Play Store installed. So if you have another launcher or two just to be safe installed, you should be good to go to do this. So it does require root access, so we're going to use an application called ES File Browser. And we're going to open it up. It could be any file browser that has root access technically. Okay. You're going to go to System. You're going to go to Private App. And you're going to try to find the Amazon Fire Launcher. And right there it is. And I'm just going to copy that. So copy. And I'm going to copy that to 
just really it needs to be just any other place on your device let's see if I can find it SD card downloads just for a good place to throw it and paste it there so that worked okay which is good so then we're gonna go back to that same folder and this time we're gonna delete it now that we have a backup so fire launcher is right there and then this time we're gonna hit delete and delete cannot be deleted alright so we have to turn on root access mode so to do that go here turn that on grant root access now we should be able to delete it so we'll go back to it again right here and delete alright so once it's been deleted right here what I found is you're gonna see some kind of funky stuff going on on your screen and it's gonna be kinda of weird um, now you won't get this see this right here it pops up and tells you what launcher you want you're gonna have all kinds of issues it's gonna not have a launcher you're gonna have to use like these buttons and just scroll through here and you won't be able to get to any launchers it'll just it'll give you problems and headaches so what you want to do after you get done on installing it is see it right here this is all you're gonna have I mean you're gonna have see it's nothing there's nothing here um, now I just made a launcher that's why that worked but once, once it, it's going to be funky once you delete that file. But all you got to do is power off and power back on. Once you do that, when you hit the home button, then you'll get this option. It just, it just has to realize that that application, that fire launcher is gone. And then you'll have this option to pick your launcher. So you can see I have the two of them. So I'm going to say Google. Um, I can say Google now uses default app. Or I can say um, Apex. So I'm going to say Apex, but I'm going to say always. And now it should always return. Yep. So Apex now functions correctly and you can use it. Now, if you don't want Apex, Apex has a way that you can easily go in here to advanced and go ahead down here, default launcher. And now you can say Google now, and then you have Google now launcher and Google now you can say always. And now Google now launcher is permanently set on your uh, fire fifth gen. So there you go. That's the thing. Once you delete it, like I said, the critical thing is making sure you have a couple launchers installed. Then once you delete that with ES File Browser to make sure that it's going to be funky and it's not going to let you pick a launcher. So just power off, power back on, hit the home button, and you'll have a, a choice to finally pick your launcher. So there you go. Hope you've enjoyed this root video. Um, very, very cool. Big shout out to my buddy uh, Baxter who messaged me and told me that this was even available so I can make this video for you guys. Appreciate that, buddy. And that's going to wrap it up. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Root Junkie out.